Kiyo-san, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for inviting us to do this. My favorite color is dark blue. Tanabata. <laughs> so Nakato was established by my grandmother and mom and my uncle uh, back in 1972. And, um, my uncle was uh, based out of Charlotte in the textile industry, and my grandmother came from Japan um, a few years before that to do a southern tour and just fell in love with Atlanta and Georgia's southern hospitality and decided that she wanted to uh, move here and start her business at the young age of 63. So here we are, uh, close to 48 years now, and um, third generation, and we're trying to keep it strong, yes. I have a lot of fond memories um, with the restaurant and even helping out as a middle schooler, running around the kitchen during Friday and Saturday nights, just helping out where I can. And uh, one of my memories is earning my first $2 uh, given to me by two servers uh, after a shift, and I thought that was like amazing. <laughs> And uh, the having a family business, there is no you know business family separation. It's all mumbled into one. So it's been a interesting dynamic to um, venture through, and just taught me a lot. I can only uh, speak fully uh, on the last 15 years that I've been back uh, in the family business. Um, but my grandmother and my mother and uncle's generation. Um, did something well and put it on repeat, supported by a lot of the Japanese staff that we actually uh, sponsored the visas for. So it was a really tight-knit community, like a Japanese community. And also um, in the 70s with Jimmy Carter uh, as governor, he influenced the Georgia market for international businesses to come in. So we were more of like the um, home base where Japanese companies and their employees can have some comfort and um, being in the south during the 70s you know sashimi was considered fish bait around the neck this neck of the woods so um, I've heard amazing stories coming out of uh, you know the tatami rooms where the YKK CEO and you know was involved and my grandmother will be would be able to join that kind of meeting um, talking about how a uh, Japanese-based company can flourish in the States. And so that kind of um, base that my grandmother and my parents have uh, built is what I in inspire to be and build upon. Right, well, um, I can only speak for maybe after the 80s and on, but I remember, especially during the Olympics in 96, where a lot of the Japanese businesses were here and supporting the buildup of Atlanta, the city of Atlanta, to uh, open up the world to come and visit for the Olympics. So we had so many caterings and we were blessed to be a part of that where, you know, every factory build we would go in and have the opening party, uh, the uh, bobbin show. Uh, downtown would be a part of that with the YKK. Uh, just so many um, bases that we were able to touch and inspire. That, that was amazing. And as a child growing up in the restaurant industry, like I remember being pulled to, you know, help make onigiri bentos and box lunches and to, you know, wake, wake up early and do that. And, you know, just putting green tea bottles into certain bags, and that's heavily embedded in my memory. I wasn't born then, but um, my grandmother and mother uh, was invited to uh, the governor's mansion to do a Japanese tea ceremony, and we were invited to do that. And I still have um, Mrs. Carter's letter of thank you, uh, just framed and uh, as a keepsake for me to show my kids and grandkids, hopefully, in the later future. Yeah. My parents were uh, very supportive of the Japanese community and with that, um, especially after I've had kids that I wanted to embed their cultural heritage and uh, pass it on to my kids and so with that process the cultural uh, holidays and 
the Japan Fest that we were able to celebrate every year, uh, that also became something to look forward to and just a, um, a generational touch base because that's what my grandmother did for us and that's why Tanabata is so special to me because I remember making the ornaments and uh, hanging them uh, during the be busy beach season in July and we have another restaurant in uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So while my parents and uncles and cousins were busy running the restaurant, we would be at home making the Tanabata arrangement. Uh, so um, that cultural tie along with all the businesses that were supporting us and, you know, coming into the restaurant and enjoying that seasonal celebratory uh, holiday and being able to look up and say, oh, it's Tanabata. It's just very touching. And uh, the fact that they appreciate that and uh, we're doing something uh, to remind them of Japan is um, very special to me. Our catchphrase is defining traditions since 1972. And um, I'll never forget the story, but my grandmother looking at a tempura dish was, um, was like, maybe we should serve this with ketchup because of you know being in the South and being in the American soil maybe the American palate would prefer ketchup over tempura sauce. And um, that kind of um, adaptation that she had in mind uh, inspires me to uh, look at social media where the world is all connected now on the World Wide Web and you know, what is the most popular item in Japan that's, that's making a statement there and being able to see if we can source it and incorporate it and challenge my chefs and have the guests also enjoy it. Um, that kind of change and sort of keeping true to what is going on in Japan and trying to bring it here and keeping it authentic, but at the same time reading our guests and knowing what they may or may not prefer is a, a good base point to play around with and have some kind of um, excitement behind it too. So I enjoy that part. We're all things Japanese cuisine. We have the sushi bar behind us. We have the back tatami rooms uh, where you can have full course menu. Uh, we also have the teppanyaki side where the chef comes out and cooks in front of you. So um, we have a different array of uh, dining experience that we offer and it makes sense for us um, to, in capturing the guests um, in a wide, broad spectrum from age two celebrating their birthday all the way up to the corporate executives that come in for a business meeting. So that's one of our, um, our I guess, special occasion, um, just highlights that we have where we can accommodate whoever wants to come in. Yes, and we pride ourselves on that. And of course, you can do casual if you like. You can do very um, uh, up, you know, high-end dining if you like. So uh, we were happy to do that and be that uh, vessel. The chefs we have uh, Japanese chefs um, in each head um, position, and that's changed over the years. But basically, uh, for the washoku dining, we and sushi, we have Japanese chefs that are trained here or is from Japan, um, and we support them in terms of the visa. Um, and it's awesome to see how they've adapted into the restaurant for so long. We have, you know, 25 year, 30 year um, staff, so we're very blessed to have that, and they take pride in what they do, and um, it shows in their food. I would have to say the umami base of Japanese cuisine is what differentiates Japanese cuisine altogether. And, um, you know, of course, umami is found in different ingredients. That's not a Japanese um, base source, but um, I think the delicacy and the simplicity behind the dashi and uh, umami factor is what changes the game. Um, and for Nakato, we we make it from scratch. You know, it's not like a bottle being poured into like a soup stock. So um, we pride ourselves in that and make it with love and care. We source Japanese ingredients straight from Japan as well, um, especially the fish. Um, and so depending on the season, uh, the prefectures on where the fish are during that certain time, uh, we can see the, the different prefectures that 
the fish is coming from. And so it's a good uh, geography lesson for me too of you know, figuring out where it's sourced. It's very rare that a teppan guest or a washoku guest flips flop, flip flops in terms of dining room. But um, at the same time, depending on how old their kids are, you can see the transition where uh, they would start with the birthday parties in teppan and then they would uh, venture out into the washoku area during high school. And then once they're back from college or with their fiance, they'll be you know, having a date night at the sushi bar where their parents started dating, you know. So it comes full circle, and I've seen different families having that different era of Nikado uh, dining uh, in, their, um, in their pattern. So it's very interesting to uh, see as well as uh, be a part of. Trends that we are bringing. So I've been researching on a lot of the Instagram uh, items where people are having a fanatic experience of like the shingen, uh, mizu shingen mochi, the water droplet uh, cake. Uh, we incorporated that a few years ago. Um, also, our you know, always go-to staple um, for expats coming back to the States and they're like, oh, I miss okonomiyaki or takoyaki. And so with curbside pickup, we've actually uh, brought in the takoyaki and okonomiyaki because um, in a more formal washoku dining setting, it's kind of hard to fit in, but with a casual to-go, we were able to expand our menu a little bit to uh, test some items um, out through curbside and to-go carry-out. And um, we also had um, a virtual supper club where some of the guests have um, asked us personally to make a certain dish and we made it into a bento box with all the requests and had it for a bento pickup uh, for a virtual Zoom meeting. So it's been fun. We've always uh, moved the, the staff to keep on learning about the cuisine, not just the menu and what we serve, but how they can learn more and bring more to the guest experience. And so we actually had um, a sake sommelier come in and do um, a class where we opened up um, other restaurants to participate as well to get a certification of a um, sake advisor. So um, a lot of my staff, uh, especially my washoku servers who heavily uh, serve sake, they're all certified, including myself. And so um, we're able to recommend something that they would like for their liking, um, you know, we would ask what kind of cocktail they usually get and from there we can see the profile of if they like something sweet or dry and then work from there and it's always so nice to uh, know when they enjoy it and they let us know that they love the pairing. Because of COVID, we were actually able to expand our menu um, and do something a little bit more lighthearted and casual at the same time and as well as keep our base of our popular dishes. but. Um, and unfortunately, we had to strike some of the menus that, menu items that couldn't carry over well through to-go packaging and things of that nature. But um, we have been really successful with sushi. And um, our, actually, sushi sales have been up because of the pandemic, which is very interesting in my mind of you know, something that we offer that cannot be made at home. Uh, so they, the guests, I think, would find comfort in being able to have their favorite sushi at home. And so we've been very fortunate on that spectrum. And just coming up with creative ideas of, um, you know, origami classes so the kids can be entertained while the parents, you know, make dinner or uh, having um, Zoom meetings to showcase a bento box and go over it and have a supper club. Um, just to think outside the box and get creative is what we've been working on and focusing on. So. Family meals we've uh, incorporated into our menu as well to have a one-stop shop so um, parents don't have to worry about what they're going to order for dinner. It's just the family meal and we can all share. And so that's worked out well for us too. Um, we've had, we recently, uh, before the pandemic, got the Golden Spatula Award, um, which is the 100, 100 point score on the health inspection and also the best sushi category through Creative Loafing and uh, Atlanta Magazine. So we've, we've been very fortunate uh, to receive those. <laughs> I just want 
to have all aspects of the restaurant going smoothly and making sure that the authenticity is there, being able to do sushi, being able to do course menus, being able to do the teppan side and um, just interactive with our guests. Um, especially in the time of COVID, I, I miss that tremendously, the interaction and what we are to the community and to keep that going as well. My favorite dish would have to be out of the sushi bar, depending on what season it is. It's hard, but um, my uh, guilty pleasure is definitely uni. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, we appreciate it. Um, my name is Sachi Nakato Takahara. You can call the restaurant. I'm here most days, 404-873-6582. Uh, uh, my email is sachi at nakatorestaurant.com. Please feel free to email me with your upcoming reservation or a special occasion that you are looking forward to. Um, and thank you so much. Please keep your head up. and. Um, one day at a time through this COVID situation, and I will see you on the other side.